Riddell for decades has been focused on head protection. Smart helmet technologies will be the future of football. Core football head protection, the actual helmet, the components in, are a really critical piece to advancing athlete protection. Football, America's game, a religion to some and a money-making powerhouse to many. This game racks up billions of dollars per year, but not without scrutiny. With player safety analyzed more than ever, Riddell has become a global leader in helmet technology. Led by this man, Riddell President and CEO Dan Arment, one of the most important men in football. Data is power, is information, it can inform your designs, it can help staffs understand what's going on with their athletes. What we do is really important. Oh, that got me going. The future and how we really continue to make the game of football safer for athletes is smart helmet technologies. Awesome. What percentage of Riddell helmets are NCAA and NFL roughly? Riddell's share at the NFL is roughly 75%, and our collegiate share is 85%. Riddell develops technologies, equipment for all levels of the game. Elite levels down to youth. And one of our focuses is to ensure that those technologies that are at the elite level can be pushed down to all levels of the game. And if you look throughout history, every major innovation in football helmets has been delivered by Riddell. The data analytics trend in sports in general is very broad. And we saw an opportunity to utilize a database of over 8 million impacts and utilize that to start mining data for teams, coaches, trainers, strength and conditioning coaches to understand what's happening with their athletes from an impact standpoint. I'm glad we're here because uh, one of the questions we asked was just generally the technology that goes into researching player safety, and I don't think people realize that this is what goes into it. Oh, that got me going. So you guys beat the shit out of the helmets before you put them yeah, on people's I mean, well, heads. Yeah, I mean, you want to take your equipment beyond ranges that it's going to experience on the field so that you can really understand the performance of, of the helmet, what it's gonna do on the field. Yeah. What's gonna drive expenses over the next five years? You know, our biggest expense is, frankly, sales commissions. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. That's a good expense because that ties directly to your revenue and how successful your sales team is at executing in the field. Now, when you look at other expenses, you know, we're really, as I mentioned, we're very focused on innovation and driving innovation. So our R&D expenses are always a, you know, a really important part of our investment and our operational investments to ensure that we're delivering efficiencies and finding easier ways, faster ways, better ways to get equipment on the field, get our reconditioning process turned around faster. And those are really where our key investments are. It's really about how do we maintain our leadership through innovation. How has inflation impacted your business? Well, inflation's real. I mean, it, we've seen cost increases you know, across the board, whether it's material costs, labor costs, transportation costs. The challenge is football budgets are pretty constant. They don't react to <laughs> necessarily inflation immediately. They may over time. So we have to balance, you know, what are cost increases that we can pass along? What are ways that we can become more efficient that takes cost out of our processes to kind of balance that so that we can get to a cost that's accessible for the game broadly uh, at all levels uh, so that you know, the game can continue to move forward. So you really got to be conscious of more than just your margins. It's what's going on with the sport. How do you sort of balance that so that the broad football universe is in the best position to get their equipment and you can compete you know, effectively. How was it testifying in front of Congress? Uh, you know, it happened so fast. Uh, it again, it wasn't planned, but there was hearings being held by the House Judiciary Committee. And in January of 2010, they were holding a, a hearing and I went to, really as an observer, was happened to be introduced uh, to the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. So they introduced me and he says, who are you? Uh, I'm Dan Armand, I'm the president of uh, Riddell, leading football helmet manufacturer. And he goes, how come you're not testifying? 
well, you know, I wasn't invited. You have to be invited to these committees to, to testify. And he said, well, we'll make room for you. Um, well, okay. It's about 20 minutes before the, uh, the hearing kicks off. And myself and the general counsel at the time and our head of product and R&D sort of scrambled to take some materials that we had to cobble together a, uh, an opening statement. It was important to the industry. It was important to Riddell. And frankly, it was important to me. But uh, that's a moment in my career that sort of sticks out as like, whoa, that, uh, that was being on the spot bit, quick. Bit of a movie scene. <laughs> yeah. Who are you most thankful for? for your career, your success. I mean, you're CEO of a large sports equipment company. Um, yeah, well, look, I, you know, I've had a number of uh, mentors throughout my career. If there's the one person that's really been most supportive of my career, it's frankly my wife, Julie. You know, we've moved around the country, mul you know, multiple times, mm -hmm. uh, did so with, you know, three kids in diapers and you know when you up and leave that support system and have to go somewhere else and establish it that's not easy to do and it wasn't like I was home because I was traveling a lot so and running a business and, there's and, a lot of ups you know, and so downs there's a lot of upsides. so you know I think it's fair to say that her support through this process she's an educator and you know I really focused on making sure that things were were taken care of at home my dad worked in the in the paper mills. Um, my mom stayed at home and raised six kids. So I, you know, my mom was brilliant. I still I have her desk <laughs> um, that she this little desk that she had that uh, all the papers and everything were in it, and you know it was like meticulous about what you know what bills were paid, when they were paid. I can remember as a kid, yeah. you know, going to the to the store and you know something that had been bought on credit. But if you didn't, if you paid it on this date, it was this price. If you paid it the next day, it was it? Like, she kept track, she kept of, all track of all that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff. And football, I I grew up loving football, wanting to play football uh, since I was uh, you know a small kid. I'm the youngest of six kids, and young by a, a, a wide margin. My older brothers both played football. Uh, my oldest brother was you know a, a really good football, played in college. I remember going as a kid to one of his games and sort of being my my, my uh, other brother and I sort of in the tunnel as the team was kind of coming out on the field in the roar of the, the crowd, and I, it was like electric. You know, it sort of it got bitten at that, but I'm like, wow, I wanna do that. And uh, uh, so it's always been sort of part of what I've wanted to do, wanted to be. Football, uh, for me personally, I, I can't speak for other people, but I'm pretty certain, you know, in talking with my, my teammates and friends through the years of just how important it's been in our development and how we approach things. Man, they really are a beautiful helmet. Compared to like, I, I used to think the helmet that I wore in college. You must have looked really cool in it. I thought I did. At the time. I told you uh, my mullets, helmet still mullets has were, the... Mullets were cool <laughs> at one time too. Yeah, right. <laughs> you want me to rock and roll? See how fast you can rock and roll with these. All right, ready? Who's a living CEO that you do not know that you would love to meet and you get to d dinner with? Warren Buffett. CEO jobs can be stressful. You know, you got a lot on your plate. You mentioned you have to take the issues on yourself. What do you do to de-stress? Well, a martini never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> the powers that be personally came to you and said you can't be the Riddell CEO anymore. What do you do? What industry? You can't even be in football. Uh, you know, I think at this point in my career, I'd probably go to some sort of uh, nonprofit. How would you describe your leadership style? I'm uh, very focused on results, so I tend to be pretty direct. But at the same time, you know, what I've learned through the years is you've got to empower people, set a strategic direction, align on what you're trying to do. But I think that's what's worked best for me. What do you know now that you wish you knew back when you first started as CEO of Riddell? You know, I think time gives you perspective. Um, so therefore, the longer you get in a role, the more you understand the rhythm of the business and where your priorities are and where you should focus. And so I've kind of learned the tempo of the business and where I need to lean in and where I need to sort of step back and let people do, you know, do what they do. You get a sledgehammer. How do I look? Oh, you look great. Man, I'm you ready. Like you, you look like you're ready to play. I'm ready. Just pull that. For the Salvi Media team. Let's pull that up. There you go. We might not win the game, but we'll fight. Well, that one has to be adjusted with the screw. Yep. <laughs> How do I look, everybody? Good? 
Well, Dan, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Hope I don't look too much like an idiot right now. No, you but, look yeah, great. This looks awesome. You I'm look really great excited. In football helmet. Thanks so much for your time. Seriously, this Thank is you. this has been really enlightening. All right, you're gonna need to help me. Yeah, just, I'm sorry. 